I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about meeting your ex where they're at. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at where your ex is at in life and the things that might be impacting them, affecting them, and really causing them to make the decisions that they are. Yeah. It's so important to try and understand your ex if you're going to try and repair things because, you know, there's a lot of complications to a, you know, a relationship and the internal struggles that we have. Unfortunately, it's not as simple of, as I love this person right. and they love me. It would be, wouldn't it be wonderful if it were that simple, but yeah. it just isn't. There are things that impact them and Margaret's got some good research on what those things are, some of them. So what do you got, Margaret? I was going to say is recently I've talk, talked to several people who were in their late 20s or early 30s who were dating people in their earlier 20s. Mm -hmm. And they are just devastated when the younger person breaks up with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, And usually what gets said, um, often the wording from the breaker upper is, I don't want to be in a relationship right now. Yep. I have to figure things out on my own. Mm -hmm. Now, there may be some truth to that. Well, Craig, there might be something else to that. What yep. have you found? Well, you know, I, I often look and see what's going on there in their life. Is it is sometimes it's true that yes. sometimes they're really trying to figure something out yep. there. Sometimes it's just that they're wanting to break things off with you and they don't know what to say or that maybe right. there's somebody else that they're having feelings for and they're confused yeah. and they don't want to be in a relationship because they want to see if they're more attracted to this other person. Mm -hmm. So there are often other things going on there. Yes, absolutely. And if you're not ready to make a commitment, then you're not ready to make a commitment. And I don't think people have the words for that. I love you but I still have to figure some, some things out. Yeah. And I don't know that I've had enough experience yet to make a final decision that you are my person, mm -hmm. okay? I may not have partied enough, I may not have met enough other people yeah. to be sure that the decision I make is going to be the right one. Yeah, because you know, if you, you have to realize that when somebody starts dating you or they decide, hey, you know, maybe we're dating for four months, I'd like to be exclusive, mm -hmm. they're not saying, I want to spend the rest of my life with no. you with that decision. No. You know, a marriage and a lifetime commitment is something that takes a long time to hopefully think through and make Absolutely. sure that you're you're going to work yeah. well as a partner. But even a short-term commitment, you know, people say I made it we made it official with boyfriend and girlfriend. Even that's a big step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you have to realize that people have their own attachment issues and you got to be aware of those things and you have your own attachment issues and so if you understand that you know what you're getting into as opposed to i really like this person i really want to be with them and we're going to be together forever yeah that's just it, yeah it's not that simple right and while things in reality i mean in books they tell you there are stages and they list them in order but it's just not that simple mm -hmm. um how many people in this world have finished you know, separating from their family and figuring out who they are long after they were married. Mm -hmm. That happens. But when you're dating somebody who's still working on those tasks, you're much better off to be aware of it. Okay? And when I say, you know, you have to take another look at this at your partner's family, most people say, well, the family loves me. Yeah. Uh, not as much as you think if you're thinking about taking their child away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Yes, it mm -hmm. is. Okay. The other thing that happens is if people who have been together for a while break up, one or both of them often gets into a short-term relationship right away, mm -hmm. okay? 
which leaves both parties saying they might have been cheating on me before we broke up. Mm -hmm. How did she meet him and get so tight with him in, you know, one week or two weeks, mm -hmm. okay? And it, it's kind of heartbreaking, and it, there's little to say that's going to make them feel any better. True. All right? True. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. There's no question about yeah. it. But the person may not be ready for the longer-term commitment. Yeah. Well, if people want to be alone, why don't they just stay in the relationship they were in? Well, because if you're in a relationship for a while and you're thinking about where the relationship is going, that's going to cause you to do some serious thinking and some serious growing. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you say, that's too much for me right now and go out and have a short-term relationship, that's not going to ask the same kind of things from you. Yeah, okay. and that's often why if your ex starts dating somebody else right away, it's like, why would they leave me person me, me for this person? Right. Because they know that relationship won't last. They know right. it's not going to yeah. go on for any extended right. time, right? But that's what they were looking for. They were looking to get out of the seriousness they were in with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. It so, can be overwhelming. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And heartbreaking when yeah. it breaks up. Yeah. Okay? I can't tell you how many hurt people. How could they do this to me? You know, that we've been together for blah, blah, blah. And you've seen it with me. You saw how horrible it was, it was for me. It was horrible. Yes. And she was seeing somebody. Right away after. Right away. Yeah. yeah. Somebody that she was working with. She started yeah. talking to him. And yeah. I think, uh, you know, they start maybe started flirting with her. And sure. she was just getting her divorce finalized, right. which is a big thing. Right. And then, of course, she was thinking... Craig's going to propose to me, which I had no plan to. I mean, I would have eventually, probably. But, yep. um, you know, at the time, I wasn't thinking about it, but it freaked her out to think, oh, my gosh, once this divorce is finalized, he's going to want to propose. And she had passed comments, but, you know, at the time, I didn't understand that it was getting her that anxious. But she hadn't had any time to be a kid because she was a mother very early. Yeah. So she wasn't finished. Yeah. You know, partying and meeting other people and doing all of those things. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, looking back, I want, you know, you think things would have been much different had she met at, uh, you know, 27 or Absolutely. 28. It would have been totally different. Yeah. It would have been totally yeah. different. She was looking for her freedom. Yeah. She uh, never had it. No, no, know? she never had it. And so, you know, under, I understand these things now, yep. and you know that's why I share these things with you guys, so it makes sense, you know. Okay, the next thing you hear is this person is seeing someone else. How can they do that? Mm -hmm. This must mean they never loved me. Yep. No, it doesn't. It mean feels that. like it, it though. It feels, it feels like, 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 it. like it. Absolutely. I mean, if she really cared about me, how could she have gone into another relationship that fast? Yeah. Okay. People can care about you without being ready to make a commitment. And it doesn't mean they never loved you. No, it doesn't mean that. No, it doesn't it mean really that. It really doesn't. And I hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't mean that. Mm -hmm. um, they probably loved you in perfectly good faith, but couldn't do what they couldn't do. Yeah. Um, all right, so a casual relationship doesn't ask the same kinds of things from them that a serious relationship yep. does. The other thing that can happen is that people get into relationships in good faith, but mm -hmm. then realize that they are not ready. Or there may be issues in the relationship. Maybe yes. you were selfish. Maybe you didn't communicate. Maybe you neglected them. And they got frustrated and fed up that you weren't listening to them. That happens too. All the time. You know? And, and time. maybe there were times in the relationship where you didn't want to be with them sure. anymore. Sure. Um, relationships have an ebb and a flow. Um, okay. Um, sometimes people are already seeing someone else before they break up. Mm -hmm. But not always. And sometimes people will just say, well, I had a casual relationship with so-and-so. I used to chat with them on the computer. I used to play that game with this game with them. I used to see them in the lunchroom at work sometimes. And then all of a sudden they have feelings for the person and they hadn't planned on that happening. Mm -hmm. I think that happens more than we realize. Okay? And then, of course, they don't know what to do. Yep. Um, and then they end up saying, I love you, but I'm not in love with you yep. anymore. Yep. All right? Yep. So it's heartbreaking stuff. And the other thing I wanted to add, so I guess we got it all right now. Tasks of adolescence. Begin to focus on friends and attachments other than your family. 
and start to work on who you are and what kind of a person you'd like to be. Yep. Okay? And what you're going to do with your life. And what you're going to do with your life. In your early 20s, you're going to continue both of those processes, separating from your family and becoming more emotionally stable, right, and aware of the kind of person you want to be. Mm -hmm. The stage after that is called intimacy versus isolation. So that kind of presupposes that you've done those other tasks, but that's way too simple for us human beings, mm -hmm. okay? Many people marry and grow up together. Yeah. All right. But the fact that you love each other isn't all there is. Unfortunately not. It's okay. not that simple. No, it isn't. But when I stopped and thought about it, I thought to myself, there are people in their 20s who are trying to do all four tasks all at the same time while being in a relationship. I can see why it's mind-boggling. Sure. And not only that, Margaret, but if they're struggling with anxiety or depression, absolutely, how they might not have the energy absolutely to put right. into a, a ro romantic connection absolutely and, right. and being... Uh, you know, putting an ex or a partner first That's right. and, and giving them the time and energy and effort that a relationship needs. Those other two tasks can take all of your energy, yeah. you know, separating and, and trying to figure out what you want to do. Uh, yes, absolutely. Good point, Craig. Yeah. And I do say down here, and if your partner has a trauma history, that makes things all that much more difficult. Yes. Okay? Yes. Um, so if you're hearing about, you know, your your girlfriend having been sexually abused or your boyfriend having been sexually abused because that happens also, it happens to men yep. or being abused by either mom or dad what you do then is you call us <laughs> <laughs> but it does make things just that much more harder because in addition to all the other tasks they have to expend an enormous amount of energy trying to deal with that yeah. Okay. Margaret's got a lot of experience with yes. trauma but you know, we can deal with what we know it's what we don't know that gives us a really hard time. Mm -hmm. okay. tell, tell them what you mean by that. We can deal with what we know. Okay. Um, if you don't know that your partner is struggling with all of these things, then it's very easy to expect too much from them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I hear a lot of men telling me that they're with women who have trauma histories. And it's wonderful that the woman has told them. And most of them have been able to be wonderfully supportive but they have no idea how overwhelming it is. And to add to that, if they don't know, if they've blocked it, yes. if they've repressed it, and they w very well may have, then it's going to have a big impact on them. And the first impact it's going to have is on their ability to trust you or anyone else. Yeah. Okay? So it's complicated stuff. We want you to go out and have a good time and do your tasks and enjoy them. Mm -hmm. But it can get really difficult. And like we said, adolescents can fall in love. You can fall in love at any point. Um, and, but you've got to figure out how to plan around that, with that, and how you're going to handle the other stuff. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Hopefully you found this one helpful. Give Margaret a thumbs up for her research on this one and putting this one together. Of course, if you want to get my help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And of course, Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you think I can be helpful, please sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.